Okay, let's do a step-by-step -step problem solving, okay? The problem is there's hungry people in the community, okay? And you work at a grocery store that keeps throwing away perfectly good food, okay? Step one, you start talking to your fellow workers about how really frustrating it is. Most people are going to agree with you. Step two, you'll reach out to members of the community. You'll reach out to a church. You'll reach out to a food bank. You'll reach out to activists and organizers that are involved in helping homeless folks. You get them upset about it, and you tell them that you, as the workers, have a plan to go on strike. And then, when you show up to strike, you and all the other workers that have agreed to go on strike demand that the grocery store give away the food before it's thrown away, if it's in good condition, to give it away and not throw it away. And then you go on strike with that being your demand. Then you bring in the community members to make a big fuss about it and to rally support in your favor. And while you are on strike, while some people are on the picket line, other workers are busy knocking on doors, they're busy talking to community leaders, they're busy talking to the press about why it's so important that homeless people in your community have access to food that may be hungry school children, right? Maybe you could get school board elected officials involved in this, right? In order to say, hey, we've got hungry children. We've got hungry children who are going home without food. So maybe we maybe we use some of this food for care packages for those kids to take home, right? You get as many community partners involved as possible. Anybody who might have a little bit of a stake in the situation, you get them involved to support your strike. And at that point, it doesn't matter if you have a union. It doesn't matter if it's a wildcat strike or if it's a union strike. But that strike will get that business to capitulate because, and this is what's important, the cost right, of capitulation must always be less than the cost of the action. The cost of capitulation for the company is actually quite low when it comes to stopping them from throwing away food. The cost of capitulation is low and the cost of the action, that is the strike, is very, very high. So this is an organizing technique that is bound to work in a very short period of time and could be replicated very easily in any community. There are homeless people all over the country. There are grocery stores all over the country. There are churches and food banks all over the country. And there are people that want to see hungry people fed. If you do this strike, it will build community support for your union, and it will show people that a union can do more than just help the workers in that individual workplace, and it will build real class solidarity. This is a form of strike that should be happening across the country today, right now, as we speak. So, if you work at a grocery store or a restaurant or any place that throws away food, start talking to your coworkers and start talking to your neighbors about how terrible it is that they throw away perfectly good food. Because odds are you would probably have a very easy time even just threatening a strike and getting your workplace to capitulate to your demand that food, instead of being thrown away, should be given to people who are hungry.